Before we get into those, though, let's go with a definition of event sourcing. When you talk about an event source system, you only store <sighs> facts. Mm -hmm. All state in your system is a first level derivative off of your facts. Awesome. Just all like facts. we said, bank balance is an equation that runs off of your transactions. All but state yeah. can be worked this way. We can mm -hmm. say that we will only ever store events inside of a system and any state that you want to have, I don't care whether it's a read model, whether it's a domain object, anything that you want to have is a first level derivative off of that. And we can do this to any problem. Okay. I've been using this example for a long time. And how many of you already know what event sourcing is? <sighs> okay, good number. Um, I'll try to go through the definitions and, and showing people it fairly quickly so we can get to the more interesting things. Now, this is my canonical piece of state. Mm -hmm. So we have a purchase order with N line items and some shipping information associated with it. Yep. This is not the only way of storing information, although this is what we've been taught to care about. How many of you spend large portions of your day talking about the shape of data? All day, all day. And if you start storing this, you run into all sorts of interesting problems. How many of oh, you have yeah. a SQL migration script before? I did. Fun, right? Um, Exceptional. Fair, I will never ever do a Big Bang release ever again. <laughs> Unparalleled experience. Bring it back up. The reason why is not because I'm worried that I will take it down and when I bring it back up, it won't work. That's really easy, just do a rollback, right? What happens when you take it down and you bring it back up and then it works fine for a week and then it breaks? Oh, that's a How big How many of oops. you write migration scripts to take the new schema with all the new data and bring it back to the old schema? So we've had a joke that um, when you have this problem where it runs for a week and then it dies, you have your choice. You can either wear the fireman hat or the cowboy hat. Um, to be fair, I actually recommend a lot of teams to do this. Um, the hats are, are basically a token, and if someone walks into your office and you're wearing the fireman hat, they just walk out. Oh, come on. How many of you guys have worked in production before, and then someone <sighs> came in to ask you about the Christmas party? And you're like, get out of my office, but I can't say this. More like, now, I'll shoot you on the spot. Piece of state, but this is not the only way of dealing with a set of information. I could also deal with it yep. like this, where we have cart created, three items added, and then shipping information added. Now that three items added is actually three distinct events. Um, if I put three distinct events there, the boxes just mm -hmm. got really little and you couldn't read them anymore. But at any given point in time, I could take these five events and I could replay them and I could give you back this. Mm -hmm. In other words, I can give you back a piece of state and what we're going to say in an event source system is that all state is transient. Don't get me wrong, it may be persistent, but it's transient. Yes. What matters is my events, because transient. at any given point in time, I can always replay it my... It is transient, passing through or by a place with only a brief story or sojourn. That doesn't make any sense. Lasting for only a short period of time, temporary. So it's not like we need to store it in our database. That information is always derivable. Sounds easy enough. We need three events and then we create an order model. So he mentions uh, three events. Uh, events are basically facts. Uh, one thing that you know about facts, they're immutable. So we can go ahead and start using records. Um, events are gonna have names. So I'm just gonna use their class names for that. So we'll create a public record. This will be like a base event where it will have a property string and uh, uh, this can be event name or type or whatever. And this can just evaluate to the name of, or maybe this get type dot name, not namespace, just a name. we we'll probably remove this. And now flashing out some events, specifically the three that he highlighted, added cart. Uh, this inherits from event and the cart will belong to a user, right? So we can place a user ID here, uh, added item to cart. Uh, we already know which user it is. We do need to tie these two together from some other material on the internet that I've written from Greg Young and Martin Fowler. They referred to this domain driven concept called aggregate ID, which basically it means something along the lines of if you have an order, everything that relates to that order, like items or shipping information, as Greg showed in his example, that's basically a single aggregate. So all of this could be stored under the same aggregate ID, but we can place this on these individual models. So int aggregate ID, or again, because it's on the event 
int aggregate and well let's just call it id so yeah what kind of item uh, are we adding product id and uh, perhaps quantity this looks like about it what about adding customer information or uh, shipping information information the word information is my worst enemy uh, i'm i mean i'm not gonna go too crazy here uh, let's just say address and we're gonna store it as a string this is just an example we can have the phone number here as well these are our events we now want to use these events to build up this temporal model that greg was talking about so let me build this i'm gonna go over to this playground script over here i already added the binaries and we can create a event store this will be or mocking a database all right so just event using core let's go ahead and create a new added card so we've added a card or some kind of user and because we're storing it in a database would like to set this id so this would have to be the same identifier for all of them it could really be an index for this list rather than each individual entity so maybe we take this id out and we really don't need to do that it's kind of like if an event store is a single list that list will contain many lists inside of it so we basically just select a nested list that is basically partitioned through that table and we bring it out by aggregate id yeah so this can basically this list is the thing that could be hidden behind an index anyway uh, user id we don't need to go too crazy just supply user id here so we've created something like this then we want to add an item to cart let's say we're gonna add item one two of those and then one item number two and this is really this is what i need big smoke you know two number nines and one number seven and uh, whatever else he had right and then we're gonna add uh, some shipping information right 42 uh road lane a very english uh, you know address and then phone number i don't know something like uh, whatever these are our events we now want to do something with them you could say this is that current state is a left fold of previous behaviors Current state is left fold of previous behaviors. Look at this. In functional programming, fold also termed reduce, accumulate, aggregate, compress, or inject refers to a family of higher order functions that analyze a recursive data. Blah, 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 blah. If we go down here to some of these diagrams, we basically have the right fold here and left fold here. Uh, reading through this a little bit, basically for the right fold, this is a binary tree, so if we want to add all of these together we would have to perform this operation first and then this and then this so this would be our shipping information going all the way up to and you don't want to draw that but all the way up to create card so for left fold we would basically start at you know create card and go all the way up to shipping information essentially doing an aggregate function all right in, in javascript it would be known as reduce and well, if you don't know what an aggregate is, uh, you're lost, right? So event, event, uh, let's aggregate. And we want to aggregate on previous things. So this would be the aggregate. And in reality, this would be our view model or order in which we aggregate into. And these would be events, right? So at the moment, this wouldn't really aggregate into anything. I don't want to aggregate events. I want to jam events into this view model that i'm gonna build right so in the core let's create our view model or this temporal representation where we would have the order do i care about this being immutable i don't think so place this and there we go this is the order view model and i mean yeah we will need to build this for this for this to be available for me uh so this is an order that I'm gonna be building up. It's the first thing that I'm gonna supply, right? And at the end, it is going to return the complete model, but it's gonna aggregate everything. So uh, realistically, if this is all immutable, right? Uh, the order object would change over time. However, in my case, you know, I'm not really that bothered. So for this function, whatever this function is going to be, however complicated, at the end, I want it to return models and based on the events that I'm getting here, the order should look a different way. So we add a card. So if event is 
added card, uh, right? <laughs> Uh, this is probably gonna look a little bit stupid. AC, uh, that means order. And then in the end, uh, I guess we just want a couple of these, right? Item added to cart and add shipping information. So for quantity, we wanna go ahead and add these products. Uh, let's format this a little bit, put this. So I'm aggregating these events. Yep, add shipping information. So, I mean, same thing here phone number put it over here and there we go uh, it looks about right and uh, not a hundred percent sure how item removal would happen as well or if we want to update a specific piece of information but in the end this should give us the order and you know hold on and there we go so we have two number ones one number seven and two number nines we have the user id and i mean basically left folding events to get this final piece of information. We can see how we are supplying a new order here. So if this would be a snapshot that we store somewhere and we just insert the snapshot here, all the events uh, happen that happened past uh, the snapshot, we would still end up at the same object as if we would replay all of the events. Uh, let's go ahead and work up to an event that basically attempts to remove something. So coming back to the events, uh, I know I added this name here and I am type checking here, maybe suggesting that this event name may not be needed. Although if I'm storing all of these in a dynamic database and I don't exactly know what I'm pulling out, I want to be able to deserialize them into a correct event. So potentially this could be very useful if all of these events get stored in the same table, which stores some serialized type of data. So anyway, added item to cart, let's say removed item from cart. Let's go ahead and add the new removed item from cart right over here. And let's remove uh, one number two or one number one. I feel like this could be very similar to this. Uh, if I can copy this, uh, let's take uh, order products. Uh, I know uh, these could probably be aggregated together in the product model, uh, like the quantity and thing. I'm just uh, reducing the quantity counter if I want to, but uh, let's go ahead and just boom, rerun the application. And there we go. So uh, one item is being removed. We could probably try snapshotting this as well. So let's say we will uh, have that order right there. These are events too. And let's say these events will have the remove one and oh, these will have all the other ones uh, come at the end. Uh, it's the same function really. I don't, I don't want to duplicate this. I'm okay with duplicating this snapshot, but not this function. So var a, hopefully maybe this will help order order. And then, uh, oh, sorry, not comma there. And event, right? C sharp 10 automatic typing, right? Uh, so yeah, hopefully this makes sense. What this function is, uh, this a, uh, let's say order aggregate, whatever this function is, or grab it, pass it in there. And then, you know, this is, order one or snapshot one. And then we want to create a snapshot two. And you know, we just supply a different set of events. So these will be events two, and we aggregate them into order one. And yeah, it's, it's just still the same function that we drag them through. So yeah, if we're doing snapshotting, you can see how uh, from the previous video where you have this secure S thing, uh, the process which is doing the updating or the snapshotting will basically pull that object down and be able to apply it to this snapshot like somewhere in the middle right so you know how these events apply and here is the operations for applying them or reverting events if you have add or remove right obviously super simple example this is probably not covering or not even capable of touching a lot of complexity that you could run into with using event sourcing, but it's a stepping stone, right? We just, we're just getting our foot through the door here. Uh, with that being said, uh, hopefully you've enjoyed this short little video. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments section below. Check out the description and my patron. I have a bunch of new tiers available. See if any of them can help you out. Thank you very much to my patrons who already support me. Don't forget to join my discord server if you haven't already. Hope to see you around and have a good day.